Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. This is my Variac. It, uh, it's a variable auto transformer that you can change the voltage of mains AC anywhere from, you know, it's, it comes in at around 230 here, but you can change it from zero up to 270. Quite a useful tool. I use it for testing things and smashing washing machines. More often than not the latter these days. It's got a fault somewhere. It's tripping the fuse on the house. So let's set that to resistance there. Maybe we can see that. Or continuity resistance, whatever. I think what happened was whenever I used it last, the um I think whenever I used it last the cable got crushed between live and neutral. So I'm trying to check for continuity here. I'm not getting anything there. I don't think I crushed it on the live side, on the input side. That screw's knackered. This whole thing's a bit a bit dud. It's had a hard life. It's only 8 amps, but I tend to use it about less than half that. There we go. That was a really tight screw. Ho ho. Come off. Oh, crusty old cables. A little bit of burning in there, or darkness, or whatever you want to call it. It is earthed. It's got an old iron flex, you know, unkinkable uh, flex. And I don't really like this arrangement. I would rather have a metal clad plug on the Variac. That's the way they seem to be sold nowadays if you buy them. But you can see the insulation, well, the, co the covering and the insulation is pretty knackered there. But it's modern cape, modern wire colors. So let's just test that again. Live to neutral, it might be neutral to earth actually. I hadn't thought of that. Nothing there. Or or live to earth. Yeah, we're getting a we're getting a neutral to earth failure. Neutral to earth. And that's why it's tripping the switch. So this whole cable is probably a dud. And then you can see over here. Well, I could in the short term just shorten the cable. It's probably the easiest thing to do. But somebody's made up, I bought this used on eBay. Somebody's made up this piece of Perspex as a cover for it. It's got two odd screws bunged in. It's got a hole in it. If you really wanted to, you could stick your fingers in and I should have checked that was off first. It is off. Touch yourself a live or a neutral. There's no insulation or no covering on the bottom. It should be in some kind of a box or something, I suspect, but it isn't. And there's different, you can see the different tappings there onto the coil for the different output voltages. Because you can have it arranged, say, with a one, let's have a look in there actually, a 110, I think, takeoff, and uh, let's have a look. Let's see what it says. I don't need to bluff. I can just have a look. That's the perspex. So you can have in and out across one and five. You see that? That's better. Across one and five, you've got 270 volts. So I think that should really, one of these should move up or down. That's the variable there on the output with the variable arrow. And that's your live connect. So it's a variable neutral on this one. I'm not sure why that is. What do the specs say? Zenith Electric Company Limited, London Northwest 2, Variac Transformer, 100 RM, 240 volt in, 50 phase, 50 cycles, 50 hertz. Output 0 to 270, 8 amps, and the KVA ratings struck off it. Number AF. Don't know what that means. It is what it is. I'm feeling, oh, I could have it's mashed up at this end as well. It's a pretty, it's a, oh yeah, that, that insulation's completely broken down. So that's about a meter, no, it's not, half a meter from the 
the business end. I think in the short term, what I'm gonna do is just rewire it here. And then later I'm gonna think about making a cabinet and if you've got any suggestions for a cabinet, let me know. You don't need to see me wiring up a socket. It is what it is. But yeah, let me know if you've got any ideas for this because I would like to make it better. It's quite a good tool for testing things. If you've got a drill or something and you're you're worried that the insulation's knackered on one of the windings or a motor, you can bring up the voltage very slowly. Same for testing washing machine motors and stuff like that. You don't have to give them the full whack straight away and risk that they overspeed. Handy little tool, a Variac. John Ward on YouTube and on his website Flameport, flameport.com, flameport.co.uk, I don't know, did a restoration of a different casing but the same Variac. And I need to watch that again. I've watched it before. He put new carbon brushes in on the on the contact inside and did other stuff to it if I recall correctly a far more thorough job than uh, what I might do what I was thinking was to just build a timber box for it three sides with a handle on top that you can reach this underneath and still read it off but that there's a handle on top made out of pine or something like that or some other plywood or something uh, and then with the plug on the end the, the socket a metal clad socket like this instead of what it had already, which was, you know, this little thing. So a metal clad socket with a switch is just a little bit stronger, maybe, than a whole piece of iron flex. But for now, that's what I'm going to do. Questions or comments, leave them below. Especially the comments and advice. Thanks for watching. See you later. And so just a little demo of what I mean. It's at about 70 volts there. And you can see this light bulb. Turn it down. Turn it up, brighter, 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 brighter. That's all it does. It just turns up and down the voltage. 20, 40, tungsten begins to go red. 60, 80, 100. Will it pop? 240 is what it's rated at, and you can see it flickering there. I guess it's reacting with the frequency on the video, bizarrely. Actually, that's a bit strange, because the frequency should be there. It's about 190, 200 volts. But it flickers. It's just a standard incandescent light bulb. Anyway, that's all it does. See you later.